Hello watch enthusiasts. Now watch prices increase with each year, and so it's becoming more and more important to be able to have a watch which you can wear at all occasions and in every, every possible circumstance. And so in this video I'd like to talk about videos which you could ideally own as single watches um, as opposed to having a whole collection. Because it's true that having a, a versatile timepiece is extremely convenient, whether it's your only timepiece or simply a component of a larger collection. And so these watches vary from the more affordable watches in the, the, the few hundred pound ranges all the way up to a few thousand pounds, offering a great deal in terms of value, but also in terms of being watches which allow you to enjoy water resistance, high legibility, very good accuracy, and also general qualities which will make them both uh, suitable to be worn in more formal circumstances with a suit, for example, or even at uh, black tie events if you really want to, as well as at the beach, or simply wearing them on a day-to-day -day basis. Now the first watch I'd like to speak about is very much a piece which offers exceptional value for a very reasonable price. Because this piece is from Christopher Ward, and Christopher Ward have been consistently able to offer very well-made timepieces with a very good quality of, of design and, and build, as well as the execution of the build, for a very reasonable price. And this Christopher Ward C65 Trident Vintage is no exception. And this piece bridges the gap between Christopher Ward's dress watches and their more professional C60 Trident 600m dive watch. Because this timepiece is presented as a sort of a field watch or everyday sort of timepiece. Because it's housed in a very familiar to those who've owned or, or, uh, or appreciated uh, Christopher Ward's products in the past, style of stainless steel case. But here it's been shrunk to 38mm in diameter, and as you can see doesn't have a rotating bezel, but rather simply has a brushed steel one. The case is finished mostly with this brushed finish along its flanks, as well as along the top of the lugs and around that bezel, However, it does still feature a few polished elements such as the crown guards um, and some bevels along the edges of the, the lugs. And so one's able to have actually quite a complex design, and which certainly does have a great deal of merit as far as its aesthetics go, with a neutral but characterful look. Due to the fact that this case, whilst being 38mm in diameter, has a relatively long lug to lug length for its size of 45.3mm, it's a piece which will wear very well on the vast majority of wrists, and due to its slightly smaller size, it should be wearable um, under a suit, or indeed at formal events without any trouble whatsoever. In addition to this, it's quite slim at 11.6mm thick, whilst also including a very heavily bubble-domed sapphire crystal, which both gives a, a feeling of quality to it, but also does give excellent scratch resistance, in addition to, uh, to a very premium feel and look. But this does add, add height to it, so the fact that it's still 11.6mm in thickness is very impressive. Underneath that rather beautiful crystal, the black dial is extremely clear to read as a result of being a matte black finish rather than a glossy finish in order to, uh, to emulate a vintage style, which this watch does a good job of without appearing distasteful. Now on the surface of this dial are applied indices, which whilst not having a metal rim, aren't painted directly onto the dial but appear raised above the rest, which allow, it, um, uh, allow the dial as a whole to feel more three-dimensional and, and just have a more feet premium feel to it to match the very fine brushing on the rest of the case and the extremely deeply uh, engraved Christopher Wood crown. The colour of the luminescence is aged, as you can see, but I, I don't feel it is, um, is too far towards the aged section to, uh, to be in any sort of way distasteful or unpleasant, and I think actually it gives a, a rather nice custard finish to it, and appears less harsh or, uh, or less, um, um, less brutal than the, the white or, uh, or light blue colours of lumen that one has become accustomed to. The hands strike a very interesting balance between being legible, but also being quite delicate because they're brushed to give the, uh, the, the, the hands a sort of uniform look in relation to the case, but have a, um, a, a very definite mark down their centre, where they've been bevelled in, in a very attractive and very premium way. And they are also mounted with loom down their centre, so that you can very clearly read the watch at night, which is a real benefit to a watch like this, and I feel through the use of, uh, of having the date in black, one's able to have a dial which is very clear and doesn't seem to have any clutter on it. And just as a small touch and a small decoration, one of course has that trident on the back of the, the second hand as a counterweight, which is a nice touch and really does show uh, Christopher Ward's attention to detail with this timepiece. And whilst not strictly speaking being a dive watch, this watch does still guarantee 150 metres of water resistance, which makes it very, very wearable in wet situations or indeed in high humidity, which is a concern for some people who wear dress watches um, in areas like Singapore, for example, where there is a very high humidity about. But aside from that, um, aside from that, from that water resistance, the, the movement which is housed behind that wonderful Trident embossed logo case back is a Salita SW200. Now the SW200 is a, a very well-known movement and one of very high quality, especially in this, this configuration. 
and provides the date and 38 hours of power reserve with hacking and hand winding to make the watch a uh, convenient automatic watch, and but also have some of the additional features which, uh, which do just make the, the use of the watch altogether more, more easy and simple, and so that you can set it more, more, more easily. Of course, it does have that hacking function. And in addition to that uh, Swiss-made movement, one does have a five-year warranty, which is a benefit with Christopher Ward, so you do have a bit of peace of mind with the timepiece, which you wouldn't normally expect for this price range. But in terms of the straps available, it comes on a variety of different brown and, and black straps, where, uh, where soft, um, uh, sort of matted and distressed leather straps are concerned. But also, moving up from the 595 base price up to 660, you can get it on a full metal bracelet, which is brushed to give it a, a more tool-like uh, tool aesthetic, and of course is water-resistant so you can swim with it without any real concern. And so with fantastic functionality and a very robust build, I feel this watch is a very good combination and, and compromise between the, the robust nature you'd want in an outdoors watch with some, uh, some dress characteristics and something you can wear far more formally. And so for £595 to £660, I think this makes an excellent option for a Swiss-made watch which you really can rely on. Now the following watch is one which is created by Zinn. And Zinn are one of the finest technical watch manufacturers in the world. And, and are known for their pilot's watches because they were founded for this purpose in 1961 due to a, an apparent absence of the highly technical pilot's instruments in the period that were up to the standards that they saw. And so Zinn today produce a great deal of very technical watches, but one of their most well-known watches is of course the 104. And the 104 has been spoken about by a great deal of members of the press and on YouTube as well, but I think it deserves a place in this video because it's such a complete package for this price, and offers an, an enormous amount to the buyer and indeed the lover of pilot's watches alike. Now speaking about the reasons why this makes uh, a robust and resilient watch to start off with, because this is a key part of any, um, any uh, watch that you're going to use every day. Because this watch is water resistant to 200 meters, courtesy of a screw down crown and a stainless steel 41 millimeter case, which, uh, which gives the watch a, a lustrous look in terms of being fully polished, but also a very resilient one at that. And in addition to a 200 meter water resistance, the watch is also given a, a negative pressure resistance because of course this is a pilot's watch after all, and so as a result it has to be able to, uh, to resist a sudden decompression without blowing out its crystal due to the higher pressure of air inside it. And so this has been taken into account by Zinn and, and prepared within the specifications of the watch. In addition to that, they've taken real care in terms of adhering to the ISO and DIN specifications for anti-magnetism and shock resistance. And so whilst this watch has a movement which people often view as somewhat pedestrian, which is the Salita SW220-1, they've taken this movement, which is already a very good quality Swiss-made automatic movement, which is, uh, is incidentally a derivative of the same one used in the Christopher Ward, but they've decorated the whole movement beautifully, which you can see through the exhibition case back on this watch, and, and also have regulated it extremely well. And uh, what I've actually found is that uh, my own example of this, which I've owned for over a year now, keeps the best time of all the watches in my collection, which is, uh, which is a real testament to a brand like Zinn for testing their watches very rigorously. And the care that Zinn have taken with this watch is also seen on the front of the watch, because one sees a, a sapphire crystal which is very subtly domed, but also has been created um, with a, a, a double layer anti-reflective coating on the inside and the outside of the crystal. And what this means, whilst also extremely rare for this price range, is that you get an extremely high level of legibility at any real angle that you can see the watch. And so this means that even in direct sunlight you can still read the dial in the hands very very clearly without any trouble. And the care has also been continued to the case back, where one sees an exhibition case back in, um, in sapphire as well, which has also been given an anti-reflective anti treatment, also just as sort of an extra rigorous measure to be able to, to guarantee the best uh, visibility if you're looking at that beautifully decorated movement. And of course under that, uh, that crystal one sees the dial, which comes in a variety of variants with, uh, with a black and a white variant of the version with the indices, with the black version being matte black and the white version being a glossy enamel white. And also there is a version with the Arabic numerals if you prefer something more classically correct and something more in line with traditional pilot's watches. This of course also houses luminous hands and indices, and of course that very helpful day-date function in German and English to give you the, um, the, the best of, uh, of this function using that Salita movement. And then of course there's this, this watch's pièce de résistance, with that wonderful bezel which is bi-directional and uh, moves in 60 clicks. And what's clever about the bezel is that whilst it's also a, a countdown bezel to allow you to count down uh, lengths of time, it's clever because it's a captive bezel. And effectively this means that the bezel is screwed into the case itself, 
which means that if you were to catch the bezel on something, or hit it on something, it won't be knocked off like a conventionally sat bezel, which is attached using, um, using only an O-ring, which is the usually uh, accepted way of keeping a bezel in place. And so this really does show a, a great deal of innovation for a watch of uh, just over £1,000, and then reaching up to just, just under £1,500 if you look at the version on the bracelet. But then in addition to this, one does see the, uh, the very clever use of case proportions to make it a very versatile watch as well. Because due to the fact that this watch is fully polished and is only 11.5mm thick, one's able to wear this watch very, very comfortably under a cuff, which means it's extremely versatile as a daily watch, giving you all the functionality you would want with that timing bezel, the day-date function, and extremely high accuracy, but also with the, the use of a slender watch which you can really forget about, whilst it's extremely resistant to the elements, but also will slip under any cuff and provide you with, uh, with sound timekeeping at any real event. Where straps and bracelets are concerned, the strap versions of the watch offer a great variety of different variants from Zinn themselves, with straps such as cowhide straps giving a slightly more distressed or slightly more, uh, more vintage look to the watch, whilst there are some more neutral blacks and even some Alcantara straps to give a, uh, a softer appeal to the watch, and these come into £1,050, which I think is a very reasonable price for such an all-round watch with such an excellent level of quality in every, every department. But if you do want a metal bracelet, Zinn provide two different bracelets for £1,490. And these bracelets come either in the, the fine link, uh, five link bracelet, with, uh, with a, a great number of polished elements to it, which is the more formal of the two. And then if you want something which is perhaps more, a little bit more, um, uh, more rough and ready, you have the fully brushed H link style of bracelet, which is my personal favourite. But I think whichever you go for, you're getting a superb watch for an excellent price, which, quite frankly, is difficult to top unless you go into the £2,000 price tag sort of mark um, compared to other brands. For the third watch, I'd like to move into the £2,000 price bracket. And the reason for this is that I feel the Christopher Ward offers a fantastic option under the £1,000 mark, whilst the Zinn really does, um, does fill that, uh, that market gap between £1,000 and £2,000. And so with this third watch, I'm moving to Tudor, and this is the Tudor Black Bay 58. Now, the Tudor Black Bay is universally accepted in the world of, uh, of watches as being a fantastic option as a vintage-style dive watch. However, I'd like to use this Black Bay 58 as an example of a brand which really has understood what people actually need or want in an everyday style of dive watch. Because where this watch is concerned, it doesn't have the greatest water resistance, or the, the greatest technology in its bezel, for example, or indeed the, uh, the greatest number of features. However, the way it amalgamates all of these together means that this is a watch which you could quite happily wear every single occasion you go to, be it diving or going to a formal event. Of course, whilst the Tudor Black Bay is an extremely well-recognised and well-known watch, I think for many people it remained a watch which was slightly more cumbersome and slightly more eccentric than a Rolex Submariner, despite coming from the same group as the Rolex. But I feel that with this Black Bay 58 released earlier in the year at Baselworld, they really struck the right balance. And I don't mean to make the argument for watches having to become smaller than they are, because I enjoy a lot of very large watches without any real trouble. However, I feel the fact that this watch is 39mm in diameter and only 11.9mm in thickness, despite having a very heavily bubble-domed crystal, makes an extremely interesting product, which is both formal in its design and aesthetics, but also has a, a definite tool-esque character to itself as a result of an extremely capable movement. Now, thanks to that beautifully finished stainless steel case, which has wonderful beveled lugs, which are more delicate than those of a Rolex Submariner, and of course polished sides to the case, the watch guarantees 200 metres of water resistance, which is excellent to see thanks to that large screw-down crown, which appears both easy to use as a result of its, its size, but also gives the watch a certain character, which is, uh, is really unmistakable. And in addition to this 200 metre water resistance, one does of course have a unidirectional rotating bezel, which with its fine knurlings around the edge, is both delicate in its build but also extremely legible thanks to a very large luminescent pip at 12 o'clock, and of course the use of red at that 12 o'clock position as well, as a nod to the Rolex and Tudor past. Now, the dial of the watch is again an interesting affair, and I think it demonstrates just how much care Tudor have taken with producing a product which looks uniform in its design, and extremely well considered. Because the dial is matte black, and has that wonderful matted feel to it, which Tudor have given us for years, which also provides a slightly softer look than a deep matte black, which means that you get both a vintage style to it, but also something which will fade away and simply give you high legibility when you want it. The form of the dial itself has also been considered very carefully by Tudor, and the whole dial is domed slightly to give it a slightly old-fashioned style. 
but in addition to that one has these large luminous markers with the extended triangle at 12 o'clock reminiscent of older watches and these are filled with superluminova so that you can see this watch at night very very clearly especially when one considers those very large and highly luminescent uh, snowflake style of Tudor hands. Of course the little touches on this watch make the watch because around the edge of this one has the railway style of, um, of gilt um, minute markers and these are in gold, of course, and match the, the gilt edges to those, uh, those luminescent markers around the dial. The hands also match this gold hue, in addition to golden elements on the bezel. But thanks to the fact that this is only seen on the dial and the bezel without any of the case being in gold, it remains extremely tasteful and very formal in its style. Whilst, of course, the smaller case of this watch gives it a far more formal demeanour, it also meant that Tudor had to devise a new movement. And they haven't simply redesigned one of their existing 5600 movements, Instead, they've conceived a whole new one, the MT5402. And this movement is effectively a shrunk version of their previous movements, which is slightly thicker, admittedly, than previous movements, but doesn't have any effect on the case thickness, which in fact has, of course, gone down with this watch. But it's a COSC-certified chronometer, so of course one has extremely strict timekeeping to this watch, which is helped by the use of a silicon balance spring, which of course protects the watch to some degree from magnetism, and of course a variable inertia free-sprung balance wheel. And this means that whilst this, this uh, movement is, is uh, more time-consuming and more difficult to regulate, once it is set, it's far less likely to deviate from its timekeeping. Another benefit is the 70-hour power reserve, which means that you can put the watch down one evening and pick it up two days later, and it'll still be running just fine, which is a great feature to have. And of course, in terms of the, the options one has with this watch, the watch does come solely in this black version, but I think that's no real problem, because the black immediately gives it a more formal style, which is both reminiscent of the Sean Connery days of James Bond, but also has all of the, the style of a vintage Rolex. And is available either on, uh, on a leather strap, which is a very formal uh, concept for the watch, though I must admit I would personally go for it on the metal bracelet, which has a wonderful riveted style along the edge, which resembles bracelets of the 1950s and 60s. And the price for the version on the strap, whether you go for it on a leather strap or a, um, a, a cloth strap, is £2,340, whilst the bracelet is £2,560, which I think is a reasonable, um, a reasonable trade-off to make, because buying a bracelet will, will no doubt be more complicated than that, and replacing the bracelet more expensive. Now the next watch I'd like to speak about is most likely the most formal watch in this video, but still holds its own as far as an everyday watch to be owned by any individual, who enjoys very impressive technology, exquisite case finishing, and a design which is unique. And this is the, the Grand Seiko SBGA 283G and the SBGA 285G. The difference between these two is the dial colour, and so as a result I've included both models because they fit the same price. But these are effectively dress watches from Grand Seiko, which is Seiko's high-end division, and has shown itself to be uh, a certain match for the likes of Rolex and Omega. And I can certainly understand those who would be reluctant to spend £3,500 on what is a watch produced by the Seiko Corporation. However, allow me to persuade you otherwise, because this is a watch which shows elements which are normally inaccessible for this price range, and has unique technology in it. Now, starting with the case of the watch, one has a 39mm case by 12.3mm in stainless steel. It's brushed on the top of the lugs and polished with their own proprietary Zeratsu style of black polishing on the sides of the case. And this creates a level of, uh, of polishing which is beyond anything I've seen from any other brand. The quality of the product is absolutely superb and goes back to generations of, um, um, of metalwork in Japan, which is interesting to see as far as where the heritage has taken them with their watchmaking. Where design is concerned, one can see the case undulates from lug to the centre of the case all the way back to the other lug, also with drilled lugs to make changing the bracelet or strap easier. But the, the delicate nature of the case is quite incredible, where they've still been able to make a watch which is water resistant to 100 metres and so you can swim with it quite happily. But they've been able to put so much care into creating a bezel which is polished but is polished to such a degree that it acts effectively like a mirror if one looks into it, which is high praise really for a polished finish, where the vast majority of polished finishes don't create that mirror finish, but rather create something which is, is both shiny and, uh, and lustrous, but lacks that, that finesse and that detail. And this care is also extended to the brushing, which is incredibly fine, and done to an incredibly high degree, quite frankly, for this price, and, and is certainly comparable, if not uh, more impressive, than that seen on the equivalent Rolex, for example. As in addition to this, the Grand Seiko logo, which is so deeply engraved on the crown, is also applied beautifully in polished metal to the dial, which of course is now the, the sole name for these watches, as they've moved away from the rest of the Seiko Corporation and operate autonomously now. And if one moves over to the dial, it's been finished with a great deal of care and finesse, 
and of course in a very Japanese, quite simple style, but which I think suits this watch extraordinarily well. It comes either with black or white dials with subtle texturing, such as the, um, the, the, the slightly perceived um, sunburst effect to that off-white colour of the white version. And in addition to that, as a sort of a contrast, one has very simple black markers for the minutes around the edge of the dial, which are impeccably well placed, in addition to beautifully cut um, applied indices, again in matching metal, which have been cut to be almost razor sharp in their finishing. However, what comes across as even more impressive than those, uh, those indices are the hands. Because in terms of the way they've made the hands, there's a real level of quality that's been put into this, where, for example, the second hand has a central rounded point in the middle of the hand, but each end of the hand has actually been curved subtly downwards to give it a slightly more, um, more, more complex aesthetic, and just show their craftsmanship to a certain degree more. And this is seen both on the second hand, but also on that subsidiary power reserve indicator hand placed at the 7 o'clock position, which gives you a readout of how much of the power reserve of the watch you still have, which incidentally is 72 hours. But where one looks at the rest of the hands, if one looks at the hours and the minutes, one sees these beautiful Dauphine styles of hands with extraordinarily sharp edges that have been cut and polished to a, a very, very high degree, again with brushing along the top of the hand as well to provide a contrast and also liken the hands to the rest of the case. To complete the very modern and very masculine style to this watch, but whilst giving it a subtle look which can, can be extremely formal, as well as being, uh, being an extremely uh, masculine watch as far as the design goes, is a very subtly done double-domed sapphire crystal. However, technologically is where this watch is really able to demonstrate its, its own. Because inside this watch beats the Caliber 9R65, a beautifully finished mechanical movement from Grand Seiko. However, what's most incredible about this movement is the use of, of spring drive. And spring drive is a technology which I speak about a great deal on this channel because I, I think it's one of the most fantastic breakthroughs in the history of watchmaking. And so essentially the way this watch works is that it has a 72 hour power reserve mechanical movement inside it with automatic winding. But instead of having a conventional escapement where, uh, where normally you would have a balance wheel and indeed a, uh, an escapement in its normal form, this watch effectively avoids that completely through the use of a quartz oscillator. And what this does is, is, is powered by the motion of the movement itself, but this regulates the movement, and so rather than having the conventional ticking of a mechanical movement, this has a completely smooth release of the second hand because it's, it's slowed down to the correct speed by a break. And so with this watch you're able to get an accuracy of one second a day, which is ra absolutely remarkable because usually watches are only able to certify about plus two minus two at the absolute highest degree. Whereas by contrast this is able to be accurate to half a minute a month, or even less, I've heard of them um, being accurate to 15 or even 10 seconds a month, which is an incredible feat to have from a mechanical movement. And certainly this doesn't detract from the watch being a mechanical watch, because these are handmade movements, um, and there are genuine watchmakers of the highest degree finishing, indeed assembling, and making these movements. So really this is just incorporating the use of, uh, of quartz technology into a mechanical movement without losing the spirit of the mechanical or the accuracy of the quartz. And so with its power reserve indicator, date function, an extremely versatile style with its metal bracelet, stainless steel case in that wonderful finished form, and that subtle but extremely well finished dial, this is perhaps not the most immediate wonder to behold, but after spending some time with one of these and, uh, and taking a really good look at them, the quality is absolutely flawless and will make a wonderful watch to wear every day, which is appropriate for almost every occasion. Now the final watch I'd like to speak about is the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. And this watch is quite a, a phenomenal watch in terms of being the, the ultimate versatile watch in my eyes, especially when compared to other watches around this price tag. And certainly it's not, not an inexpensive watch of between £4,000 and £4,080. However, I think for that price it offers enormous amount to the buyer, and really could be the only watch someone owns, um, and certainly is in many cases, because it does just offer so much. Now the base form of the watch is 41mm, and there is a smaller size available, but it's the same price, and I think that bearing in mind they have different movements, the 41mm version actually offers a great deal more. And it comes in stainless steel, of course, um, though there are some other versions with two-tone and solid gold um, cases, however I recommend the stainless steel version. And of course it's finished wonderfully in the way that Omega always do, with the twisted lugs which are so characterful and so typical of Omega's history, with that, that crown which now protrudes slightly, and of course the bezel which is also polished. An aspect of this watch which really helps to build the legible design of the timepiece is the dial. And the dial is created in a variety of different colours with, uh, with black and, um, um, and certain more subdued whites being the most subtle 
with of course some blues also available, and a variety of colours in terms of uh, accents and colour details. But in terms of the general design, it has a decked style, a sort of a teak decking design, where one has these lines running horizontally across the dial to create a quite interesting style, and one which is very typical of the, the Seamaster uh, form, and does bring it into the modern age. In addition to that, one has these applied indices running around the edge of the dial in, uh, in metal, in white metal, to match the hands and, of course, the applied Omega logo, which is a lovely touch to see. And, of course, these are luminescent, with loom applied to the centre of them, which means you'll be able to read this watch at night extremely easily, especially when the hands have luminescent material also applied to them, which is less than in their diving models, but is nonetheless all, all, um, all you need, really, to be able to see this watch and use it at night. And of course the hands are cut in a slightly more complex way with lines running down them, and of course with that arrow tip on the end of the minute hand. But I think this contrasts the second hand, which is more subtle and uh, more classical, very, very well, and also helps with the balance of the watch, which is, which is uh, created courtesy of that date being placed at the 6 o'clock position. The legibility of the watch is really helped by the use of a double anti-reflective coated sapphire crystal. And Omega have become extremely well known for making extraordinarily legible dials as a result of their brilliant crystals. And whilst it is, it is possible to scratch the surface of that anti-reflective coating on the outside of the crystal, you can polish it off quite easily if it does become severely damaged and, uh, and is, is bothering you, but otherwise provides extremely good legibility, and the sapphire itself is very, very difficult to scratch. And I think this matches the very modern style to this watch, which is very versatile and very varied in its forms and its, its influences, which I like a great deal. Now, of course, as a result of this, uh, this watch being a timepiece, which is designed to bridge that gap, between the technical and the formal, the movement inside this watch has to keep up, and it certainly does with the calibre 8900 only seen in the 41mm version of this watch. And this is one of Omega's new line of, uh, of master coaxial chronometer movements. And what these movements are are effectively some of the most accurate and well-designed fully mechanical movements in the world. One has automatic winding which gives a 60 hour power reserve via two spring barrels, and then of course one also has the use of that fantastic coaxial escapement, which, uh, which is now fully integrated into the movement and gives these watches a, a greater service interval as a result of, of the, the need for no lubrication in this, uh, this escapement. Naturally, of course, the watch is chronometer certified, but it goes beyond the usual COSC specifications because it is METAS certified, which is a far more rigorous test involving a great deal of, um, um, of uh, magnetism tests. And this is run as a result of the fact that the watch has a great deal of silicon parts, and so as a result is resistant to 15,000 gauss which is 15 times what the Rolex Milgauss, which is Rolex's answer to an anti-magnetic watch, can do. And is also, um, in addition to, to this, um, able to resist um, really any magnetic field you'll come across in daily life, and quite frankly is, is one of the highest anti-magnetic um, field resistances one's ever seen, with the only one I can think of which had a higher one was a, an IWC from the past, which simply didn't work very well as a result of materials not being developed enough in that period. But suffice to say, it has one of the finest movements on the market in it, but one detail of this 8900 calibre, which is quite clever, is the fact that if you screw the, the crown out and pull it to the, um, the first position um, after you've, uh, you've pulled it out, one finds that actually one can move the hour hand in hour increments without affecting the, the running of the, the other two hands. And what this means is that you can both change the date quite quickly, but also if you're moving between time zones, you can change the time zone extremely quickly and easily without having to reset the watch completely which is a real help, especially with a watch of this type, that will be in contact with water, with travels, and with really everything that, so that you can throw at it. And so, being available on, on both metal bracelets and rubber straps, in addition to some, uh, some non-water-resistant leather straps, I think this is a phenomenal option for someone who wants an all-rounder, which certainly is a luxury watch where the price is concerned, but will last extremely well, and is very durable, but also subtle in its design. And so I'll conclude the video here, but do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of the video, and indeed of my choices for this category. Because there were a great deal of options for this um, this concept of, ha of having one watch for all purposes, and an extremely versatile piece. And so I'm very curious to hear what you think. And if you did enjoy the video, then please do like, share and subscribe to help the channel, and also to be able to enjoy more content here in future. So thank you very much for watching, this is Armin the Watch Guy, out.